January 11th. And then we're trying our second method out. We're riding in the rain. It looks like a little bit of rain, but not much. Uh, it's dry right now. So I'll try it out anyways, because you never know. And we're off. This is about 68 degrees. Not exactly a warm day, but not a cold day either, so... It's neither here nor there. No one on the right, and now uh, no one on the left. So we're off. I checked the reporting on the other one, uh, not not the one I did yesterday, but the one I did earlier, and the sound was okay. So uh, it's okay for here for this bag, for this uh, system. It's basically a Ziploc bag over the camera. I got a small enough one for electrical components, very clear. It should give us uh, a good view. You know you're supposed to wait. rain, not much. There's a drop here or there. I haven't been needing my uh, sun visor. Here we go. Here comes the rain. As we go further south. Nights are different now, a little different in terms of sleeping. The dreams have sort of shifted a bit. And it's mostly the, the issue of my behavior and how and what I sort of expect. See, what happens is your behavior in many ways is a function of your expectation. The more you expect things sometimes uh, and it don't go the way you want, uh, the angrier and the more upset you get. But the thing is, is that I've learned to deal with various different issues, and this is through the experience within the dreams. And as I'm handling things better, the dreams end up being better. So, there are still the issues, there are always going to be issues. I think everybody has issues. <laughs> I don't think there's a person in the world who can actually say that they're sane or completely sane. Everybody has a little bit of nuts in their system. It doesn't matter of how much. Some people are more functional than others. Other people, the nuts, their nuts make them uh, dysfunctional. So we are riding in the rain again. So this is another ro uh, rain vlog. Got somebody on the right here. Now, why they're walking in the road, I don't know. Got a bush cart. Uh, I guess back in the old days, uh, there's an older guy, you could walk in there with a bush cart. But, anyways, uh, off we go. Gonna get a little bit of wet, a little wet, but not much. At the stoplight here. 
and the camera is a lot more stable than it was uh, yesterday. The rain seems to more or less stopped again. Well, it's a little bit spinning a bit. I guess a lot of it has to do with the riding. Just like you know, right now there's no wind, but uh, when you're riding, there is wind. Alrighty, there we go. Off to the races. As soon as I start riding again, the rain starts. Oh, it has to do with it's, it's these are small drops within the rain, within the wind. Uh, that typically don't affect you when you're standing still, but when you start going at a faster speed, it does indeed have an impact. I haven't watched Lionel in a while. I've got to go back and see what he's up to. Uh, but looking at Yvette Carnell, and it's, it's more or less the same issue. Uh, I think she. The 2020 election destroyed and knocked out a lot of people. There was a major political shift, a shift in the political wind that a lot of people didn't expect. And even when things that went went the way they expect, they went went the way they wanted, they didn't necessarily get what they expected. And this is true of Yvette Carnell, is that she didn't get what she expected, and she basically found out that uh, what the Democrats are all about. It's the same thing that Mar uh, the same thing that Malcolm X had talked about earlier on in the uh, in the in the 60s and 70s, early 70s, before he was assassinated. The Democrats are basically self-serving, so they use the, uh, the 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 language of you know Black Lives Matter and stuff like that. And at the end of the day, they really didn't do much of anything for the black community. And right now, feminism, feminism is more or less over because you have trans feminism now. That's where the whole issue is, uh, according to the Democrats, anyways. So nobody is really happy with the election of Biden, even though they voted for it. But there's a lot of uh, a lot of disappointment. Those are the bigger holes. Uh. And the big bumps now have come to the end. That's, that part of the road is now done with, so we're on to uh, the rest of the ride. And uh, uh, this did well, for, this did pretty well. This is raining a bit now, a little bit more than it was before, so I'm going to get a bit wet.
about 9 o'clock in the evening, so about 21 hours into the day. So it's a good Sunday. Uh, interesting. Did a lot of catching up. Got the editing done I needed to get done. So that was good. Stopped by Lionel's and listened to the, the little bit of listening to Lionel to see where he's at, and he's pretty much in line with uh, what what I'm seeing uh, uh, from RP and other sources about the sort of the woke liberals destroying themselves. I mean, they're destroying everything they ever have, they, 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 everything they have. There's not going to be by the time they're done. There's not going to be anything left. That they're destroying the schools, the universities, everything. Everything that was worked for, everything that they hope to have or achieve, is going to be gone. And white people will be as ghetto as, well... Although Lionel is now talking, so he's still talking about uh, uh, communism and his opposition to the use of the term. Uh, remember, I said before that when you talk about communism, you're talking about a spectrum disorder. <laughs> and my choice for the definition of communism was not Marxism, but rather the definition, definition, the use of the term under Dostoevsky. Much better term, much better. Uh, sort of accuracy in terms of the self-destruction that occurs within communism. And this is the thing, is that people do have this pension for self-destruction. It's not something that's fictitious. People will, if given the chance, well, they will destroy themselves. They will behave in a manner that is self-destructive. I mean, that's what alcoholism is. That's what drugs are. Uh, A number of these things that are defined by 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 insurance companies as risky behavior. These are all forms of self-destruction. But people find them in many cases exciting. So they get in not necessarily understanding what they're getting into, not realizing that at some point in time that they want to get out, but they're not going to be able to get out. And this is this is, is what will end up killing them. A drug addict never intends to overdose. They're simply chasing a high, but they get to a point where the, the amount of drug needed to achieve a high is also the amount necessary for an overdose. In other words, the body can't handle the amount that this being put into the system. That's when the overdose is. <laughs>
lot to be learned. The, 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 thing is, the, the amount of history that's there is enormous. So you can't, but the thing is, you can't be doing this all the time. And so, kind of on the summer break, as I do reorganization, still working on the notebook a bit. It's more upgrading the capacity of the network, uh, other things like that. That's being done. Uh, doing some extra work on atmospheric physics. And to a certain degree, I've also increased my uh, meditation. The other thing is, is that what sort of puzzles me is that these getting the understanding of how not to be self-destructive out to other people is a very tall order. And it's often difficult to achieve because, as I said before, there are things that you know, particularly intellectually, so you can know something intellectually, but not be able to handle it emotionally. A lot of drug addicts are not simply parties. Many of them are not there simply because they wanted to get high. They're there to, to, in many cases, it's a form of self-medication. So in other words, you can't just simply generalize for things. We can talk about a general sense of in the initial going into drug addiction. If you've never been in drug addiction before, you don't really have a problem. You're talking from the party sense. You're the partier. The partier eventually becomes self-destructive. You're seeking excitement. But there are those those out there who are drug addicted, who are drug addicted, the drug users, who have been abused in life. There's a variety of different forms of abuse that you can sort of look at and see, understand that they want to escape from this particular abuse. And their only sense of escape is uh, the uh, drug addiction. And so to numb the pain, they escape through drug addiction, they, they escape through their high, they escape through their addiction. However, the claim of the addiction, the cost, is significantly more than they expected it to be. And the cost ends up being themselves, their lives. Because once they're in, they can't get out. But then again, how do you escape pain that is psychological, that's not physically real? Particularly when, in certain cases, if I talk about my dreams, you can relive things that that are the uh, the sources of abuse. You can actually feel the pain. There is a physiological response in terms of feeling pain, uh, physical pain, even though the event is psychological. I mean, this has been shown. With amputees who could still feel their limbs even though they've been amputated. This is something known as phantom limb. And so the thing is, how do you get in there and start resolving some of these problems uh, to make the world a better place? And it's not always an easy thing to do, and it's very slow moving. And this is where it could be, and it's in some ways, a daunting task. Because The expectations of resolution are something that are rather far off and, in many cases, elusive. And at the end of the day, you're not necessarily going to be thanked for what you've done. Matter of fact, in many cases, people aren't even going to understand or, or acknowledge what you've done. So, but the thing is, is if you want a better world, then that's what you have to do, regardless of whether you're thanked or not. In other words, Uh, 
how to look and change, put on the uh, turn signal. So I'm, changing, I'm turning now. And that's part of the, the meditations that I'm sort of studying is how to be selfless. And but that's difficult because there, in many cases you want, particularly when you go into a social setting, you want to have a, you, you, there is a sort of uh, a feeling that you want a sense of sadness, even though it's elusive. You may not be the person of status or, or, or the ability to have it, the person who has the ability to have a status. Maybe something that's sort of, well, significantly elusive. 